Hey art folks, today I'm bringing you a look at the Illumina palette from A. Gallo. It's such a beautiful wooden palette. I wanted to show it off among some magnolias this spring. So this palette is produced in collaboration with the company Tintoretto, which is a small company near the A. Gallo Studios in Italy. They also manufacture the synthetic brushes that come along with this set. So it comes in this beautiful stamped linen bag. It's a beautiful wooden palette with three different sizes of synthetic squirrel brushes. And this has this gorgeous wooden burn of the A Gala logo on the front. So you can get this set filled with the Illumina palette colors, or you can get the palette by itself. This is eco-friendly malachite. Genuine malachite is actually a historic toxic color. This approximates it very well and is actually based on Alina's research into historical pigments and a way to create a safe version of this color. And it is so cool because she uses crushed eggshells to help achieve this color. Then we also have a mineral violet, which is a manganese violet. And we also have a sepia, which is also a really important historical color. So these are the colors that were missing for me to have this full set. And then look at how this comes. It's all protected, wrapped up in plastic. And it's got the logo there on the bag, these beautiful little tassels. And then you take it out and you have this half moon shaped palette. On one side you have a plastic mixing tray. It's not porcelain, but plastic. And on the other side that you have the sections for you to put the paints in. I've had several questions about how the wood deals with water and I haven't had any issue yet. It's very well sealed. The plastic mixing tray behaves basically how you would expect plastic to behave. It's not as good as porcelain, but that would have also have made it a lot heavier. It's closed with magnets, so that's interesting. There's no latch or anything. And then when you turn it on on the other side, you have these three travel brushes. So they come in size 2, 4, and 6, which I think are the perfect sizes for travel brushes. And using these, I was so surprised about them because they really have the feel of a squirrel brush and they have surprisingly good tips. So in addition to the Illumina palette, I also just wanted to talk about the Tintoretto brushes and the sketchbook. Sketchbooks are really special because they have a Malfi paper in them, which is a small paper making factory that has been making paper in their family for hundreds of years. And the little print on the front is actually hand printed from a vintage plate, which is also so cool. And the large brush that I have is a big imitation squirrel brush, and it is just gorgeous. It's humongous. I was a little scared to use it at first, honestly, because I was like, this is too precious. But it is just an amazing brush to work with. It gets such a nice point, holds so much color, holds so much water. So if you don't know that Kazan is the highest grade of squirrel brush, so this is trying to say that it is a synthetic Kazan squirrel brush. And I'm just comparing it with the Kalinsky Sable mop that I have. That one is a genuine. I love that the little wraps are tied off because sometimes you get these mop brushes and they are not tied very well. So the hairs will fall out. I haven't had any hairs fall out from any of these brushes. And also the little tines will poke you while you're painting and I haven't had that issue. So that's a sign of a well-made brush.
Also comparing it to the genuine squirrel brush that I have from Leonardo. And you can tell that it's a lot more pointed than the genuine squirrel that I have. Squirrel brushes generally don't have like the best point on them. I think the ones from Isabe are known to be really good. But outside of that, generally that's not something that you expect. So I wanted to do just a couple of comparisons with brushes so that you can see how these brushes work. Starting with the Tintoretto synthetic brush, the regular synthetic. Now we compare it with the Cosmotop and the Da Vinci Junior brush. These are all just straight synthetic brushes, although the Cosmotop has been treated a little more. So you can see that the basic Tintoretto, I actually enjoy using it for very simple paintings and sketching but it does not hold very much color or water in comparison to especially the Cosmotop brush. Next, we have the travel brushes, starting with the size two, the size four and the size six. They have a little bit of dumping at the beginning of the line. A lot of synthetic brushes will dump color. They have a bit more issue keeping more even but they hold a decent amount of water for their size. You can see that the size two did almost as much as the Cosmotop, which I believe is a size four. So now when you're seeing this is a genuine squirrel, you can see that what I'm talking about with the evenness, instead of just having like one concentrated amount in the beginning, it's gradually declines over time and it holds a lot of water and paint more than any of these three brushes. Although the size six is doing a pretty good showing and it's the closest in size. Then just to compare another mixed brush, that's the black velvet, which is a mixture of squirrel to give it more of a feeling of being like a sable. You can see that this one also has a more even flow because it does have the natural hairs in it but it does not hold more water than the Genuine Squirrel. This is the Da Vinci Cosmotop Mix B, which is a mix of synthetic fibers and squirrel fibers to make a kind of imitation sable sort of thing. Now it's time to see the giant Tintoretto in action. Look at this. That's the whole page. And look at that going from thick to thin. Isn't that insane? Now I'm comparing this with my Kalinsky Sable. And I can't go a whole page. It does pretty decent thick to thins. And to be fair, it is quite a lot smaller, but that is a really impressive showing from that humongous Tintoretto brush. I also just wanted to show you a bit of a different in Snap because I know especially beginning watercolors may not know exactly what people are talking about when they say that brushes are mushy or springy or snappy. So a squirrel brush, 100% squirrel brush, is going to be, some people say mushy, a lot of people don't like painting with them because as you can see, if you push them, they stay in place. They don't have any resistance against your pressure. Now next I'm showing you 100% Kalinsky Scable and you can see it bounces back and retains its shape. When I compare that to the synthetic squirrel brush, it really behaves like a genuine squirrel brush. It just mushes into the shape of your pressure. Now, I just thought I'd show you the palette in action along with the paper in action. So the thing about the paper in this notebook, it is very soft. What do I mean by that? When I say that the paper is soft, if you've ever used the Saunders Waterford paper, that is an example of a more common 
professional grade watercolor paper that is soft. It kind of gives this kind of diffused look to whatever you put on the paper. All of the details are like slightly blurred and it holds water for a really long time. So if you want to have sharp details, you have to make sure that your paint is a lot drier than you would on something like an Aj or a Fabriano paper. Fabriano paper particularly is really good at holding details and Aj is actually often quite resistant to those first washes of paint. So this is a really different method of painting if you're coming from especially a paper like Arsh, but I really enjoy it. It gives like a sort of really gentle feeling when you're painting, but it's also a thing to keep in mind while you're painting because if you don't adjust your style or realize what's happening, it could be frustrating. So I'm painting a image of the Virgin Mary. I have the reference picture in the description below. I thought I would do the Virgin Mary since this is the Illumina palette and it's got lapis lazuli and lapis lazuli is of course Mary's color. Lapis lazuli is another word for ultramarine which means over the sea and that's because uh, European painters had to get this paint from across the sea and it came a long way and it was very difficult to obtain and then also very difficult to refine so it's extremely expensive so that is part of the reason why it became Mary's color. It was also often used on other saints but eventually came particularly associated with her as having this cloak made out of this. Extremely stunning because there are not very many beautiful vibrant blue natural pigments out there and expensive pigments. This is also part of the reason why it was considered that blue was for girls because, well, if blue is for Mary and Mary is the woman, then blue is for girls. So here I used a lot of yellow ochre, sepia, gold for the inside of her robes, the lapis for the outside and that beautiful scarlet to give Mary a bit of a rosy glow. This is really a sort of sketch, so no reason to get super duper detailed. But I wanted to show you a little bit of what you can do using only this palette. And you can see just how much of a mess I make. <laughs> I wanted to just talk a little bit about the Illumina aspect because I thought it was so cool to have this palette based on traditional colors. In case you didn't know what Illumina was referring to, this is referring to illumination. Uh, the first thing that might come to your mind is medieval illumination, specifically in the West, in Western Europe, but there was also illumination throughout the Islamic world and other cultures had their form of illumination. Illumination is when you have a manuscript which has had decoration added to it. Often this will be in the form of gold. It can also have colors like ultramarine and other bright colors. For me, the first thing that comes to mind is illuminated Bibles. So Bibles where, for example, the first letter of a verse is illuminated and it turned into a little story or cases where we're getting really fancy and you have a whole page which illustrates a Bible verse. All of the colors in this palette are similar to the colors that would have been used and would have been available to, to an illuminator. And we are really lucky because illuminators would have had to have made their own pigments back in the day and we don't even have to do that. We can just do a couple of clicks online and your palette comes right to you. You don't even need to make your own quill or your own brush or anything.
Illuminations, of course, added to the value of manuscripts, and they also added to the ability to understand manuscripts. They would often be illustrating a verse or a text with a extra meaning that you might not simply get from reading the text by itself. And just like there were different styles of writing that were particular to certain areas and certain schools, we had the same thing with illuminations. So having a palette like this really helps me feel like I'm connected back to these scribes and these illuminators, although of course I'm very happy that I don't have to be hunched over by candlelight working on parchment paper. I have high-grade watercolor paper <laughs> and electrical lighting and all of the wonders of modern technology. But through all of these hundreds of years, we're still connected by a tradition. So I think that that is really one of the coolest things about this palette. Besides that, of course, the palette itself is just really a beautiful little work of art and really convenient to take out traveling. It's a perfect size for a travel palette and has some of the best travel brushes that I've ever used in it. So I hope that you had fun seeing all of these different Egalo and Tintoretto products, these brushes, the sketchbook, the palette. I've talked a lot about the paints in the past and I wanted to also talk about these other aspects because I know before I got to use them I was very curious and I haven't seen a lot of people talking about them. Thank you so much to my patrons. They got to see this a long time before this was published to YouTube, so they already know all about all of this stuff. And they also have a post all about medieval illumination that is exclusive to them. If you want to learn more about illumination, then you should become a patron and get in the know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. And until then, be gentle with yourself. Bye.